As I get older, I'm beginning to realize the unfortunate likelihood that every piece of electronics that I own may eventually fail. In the past year, my thoughts about this have been more and more focused on CDs and the optical disk drives that play this kind of media. Whether it be scratches, disc rot, or dead lasers, we have to deal with the fact that CD media may not be as reliable long term as cartridges have been. How to represerve or store these games in a solid state form, free of moving parts, but still use the original console's processing chips for maximum accuracy. Flashcards have been a great alternative for cartridges, but is there such a thing for CD systems? In this episode, we'll be taking a look at one such solution, the Rhea and Phoebe, which lets you play your Sega Saturn games off an SD card. Created by Dune and Newt, the Rhea and Phoebe are ODEs, or Optical Drive Emulators, designed to replace the CD drive of the Sega Saturn wholesale and replace it with an SD card reader, allowing you to play games off of solid state media instead. Newt previously developed the GDMU, an ODE for the Dreamcast, so you could play ripped GD-ROM images off an SD card. Appropriately named for the moons of Saturn, the Rhea and Phoebe are actually two different units. The Rhea is designed to be used with early Model 1 Saturn consoles. You know, the one with the oval power and reset buttons. The Phoebe, on the other hand, should be installed in later revisions of the Model 1 and any version of the Model 2 Saturn, which have the round buttons on the console. We're able to take a look at this mod thanks to Drew Littrell from this old console, who generously donated a white Japanese Model 2 Saturn with a Phoebe ODE already installed for us to use in this and future episodes. Thanks, Drew. Because of that, all of the footage we'll be looking at in this episode is explicitly only from a Phoebe unit. Although functionality between the two should be exactly the same, it's important to specify exactly what we're running here. The design of the unit is fairly unassuming. A black PCB with a single slot for a standard size SD card. Micro SD cards can be used with an adapter, of course. Next to this card slot is a single button, but more on that later. But look. I'm no modder, so it's easy for me to say that one of the most enticing things about the Rhea and Phoebe are how little actual work it takes to get them up and running. Both require you to unplug the existing CD drive and plug in the power input and included flexible flat cable, but the Phoebe is slightly more complex and requires some soldering on the Phoebe board itself. So if this sounds pretty interesting, listen closely. If you have a Model 1 console, then you're going to want to open up the system and take a look at what kind of innards it has before you purchase. The Rio only works on the early versions of the Saturn that have a 20-pin input for the optical drive unit. Later revisions replaced this connector with a 21-pin input. The Phoebe was designed to accommodate for this change. Users of these devices have been trying to figure out if there's any telltale signs on the outside of the console to help you decide if you have an early Model 1 Saturn or later, but unfortunately, they've been unsuccessful thus far. However, if you already have a Model 2 system, then there's no guesswork at all. Just get a Phoebe. But please note that you will need to solder certain points on the Phoebe board based on which console revision you have. Check out the GDMU website for a detailed walkthrough for determining which Saturn version you have and how to install the unit. If you want to take things a little bit further, there are additional steps you can take to enable a frequency selector that allows you to automatically change the refresh of games. That means you can get PAL games to run at 60 Hz. This requires significantly more work, so make sure you're comfortable with soldering. Once installed, if a gaping hole in the Saturn drive bay isn't exactly your thing, then you could purchase a 3D printed tray for a more elegant look. A number of different retailers online sell them. This way, you don't have to worry about accidentally dropping your SD card inside of the unit, and you could also store extra cards right there. Copying your games to your SD card isn't quite as straightforward as I'd like, but once you know what you're doing, it's fairly easy. At this time, the Rhea and Phoebe do not support your typical .bin and .q files that you tend to see for CD images. The Rhea and Phoebe do fully support multiple other file formats though. ISO files are supported, but with limited functionality. They're mainly used for homebrew development on games without any audio files. These file types can be created using applications such as Alcohol 120% and Clone CD, but I've had the greatest success using the Pattis Disk Juggler software to extract disks in a .cdi format. 
Just be sure to make images with the scan gaps slash indexes, RW, CD plus G, PQ, and raw read boxes checked under the advanced options. If you already have some bin and Q files, say you have like a fan translation or something, then you can burn them to disk and then rip those disks using Disk Juggler. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step on how to rip your disks properly with Disk Juggler, then Matt Buxton from VideoGamePerfection.com has you covered. He's put together a pretty in-depth walkthrough video that takes out all the guesswork. To get the file onto the SD card, you'll want to download the SD card maker for GDMU. This free, lightweight program was originally designed for the Dreamcast ODE, but since the RIA and Phoebe all use the same folder structure, it'll work just as well. As a quick aside, did you know that it's possible to format your cards in a specific way to go beyond the perceived 32 gig card size on FAT32 formatted cards? There's a free program called FAT32 Format that can format any size card to FAT32. After the files have been copied to the card, you'll need to build a menu image. You can achieve this by downloading our menu from the GDMU website. Copy that to the 01 folder on your SD card and double click the R menu application. This will show you a list of all the games on the SD card. If you're particular about this sort of thing like I am, you can rename each game however you want. Finally, you can tweak the performance of the ODE by creating a document in Notepad called Phoebe.ini or Rhea.ini and placing it in the root folder of the SD card. There's a list of values that you can add to the file on the GDMU website. You can change options such as region, frequency, and high speed mode, the latter being faster loading from the card. This is still experimental, however, and may cause issues in some games. I feel it's better just to leave it off to be safe. Quick heads up though, every time you add games to the SC card, you'll have to make a new menu image. All right. After all that, you're finally ready to go. Booting up the Saturn will take you to the menu where all your games are listed alphabetically. It's fairly inelegant, but it does exactly what it needs to do. Choosing a game brings up an option for fast boot or full boot. The first takes you directly to the game from the menu, while full boot will take you back to the regular Saturn user interface with the disk image loaded up, like the CD was in the drive. But wait a second, you hear that? Get a little closer. No moving parts means no noise at all. Probably the most fascinating thing to me about using the Phoebe is that the Saturn is completely mute. So what's the compatibility like? Let's check out some random games, shall we? First and foremost, you're probably wondering if there is any glitchiness in game graphics or hitches in the audio. In other words, do the games play just like the real thing? Games that really push the Saturn hardware, like Virtua Fighter 2, run without issue. The Saturn's library was absolutely full of games that used Redbook Audio for its music. In The Hunt and Nice are just a couple of examples. If you're unfamiliar, Redbook Audio is when the music for a game is on the disc as CD audio tracks. You can take games with this kind of audio format, put them in your CD player, and listen to the music that way. But yeah, these play completely normal as well. It'd be a pretty big oversight if they didn't. If you load a game that has Redbook Audio with a full boot option, you'll be able to play the music just fine using the Saturn CD Player UI. One of the biggest questions you probably have is, is the loading faster? Even with the faster loading turned off in the .ini file, the Phoebe does result in slightly faster load times across the board. Syncing up the video from the moment I press start in Shinobi Allegiance and letting all the cutscenes play out does get you to the game about a second and a half quicker. So it's nothing huge, but nonetheless, it is something. Now, over the course of a lifetime of saving a second here and there, you'll have more time to play with your toys. 
Earlier, I mentioned this button right next to the SD card slot. When the Rhea and Phoebe was first released, this was used to select your disk image. But since the implementation of the menu, this button isn't quite obsolete. Its primary function is now to swap disks on multi-disk games. This is especially important with games like D that don't allow you to save before a disk ends. Simply go to your console, pop open the lid, press the button, slap that sucker closed, and bam! Disc 2 is underway. Laura. Laura. It's pretty cool that you can still get that disc change adrenaline rush, right? Fighting game fans, rejoice! Games that use a Saturn's 4 meg RAM cart, like Vampire Savior and Street Fighter 03, work just as good as the real thing. The MPEG video card also works, although I only had the chance to try it with Lunar Silver Star Story. It's safe to assume that the results would be much the same with the handful of games that support it. If you want to use an action replay for cheats, it'll also function correctly. One of my favorite things about this mod is that it'll let me check out a number of fan translations I've always been interested in. The big one, Police Knots, is well worth your time. It's extremely well done. For you Shining Force fans, you can finally finish out the story with fan translations of Scenario 2 and 3. I was relieved to find that everything I threw at the Phoebe works with the newest firmware and menu available. When I first got it, I had issues with Capcom Generation 4, Wolf of the Battlefield, where music wouldn't play during the game. It was kind of a bummer but updating the firmware fixed this and now everything works great. So there you go, a complete optical drive replacement for the venerable Sega Saturn. It works great, it's fairly easy to install, and runs with little to no issues. You can purchase the Rhea or Phoebe from the GDMU website whenever they go on sale for 130 euros. It's important to remember that Professor Abrasive, who has more recently figured out how to hack the Saturn, is working on a solid state solution that will use the MPEG card slot on the back of the unit. It'll be really interesting to see how that modless approach stacks up next to the Rhea and Phoebe. Regardless, the ODE approach is a fantastic solution to the eventual challenges that lay ahead for optical media and hardware. So if you love your Saturn and are nervous for its long-term well-being, then grab yourself a Rhea or Phoebe when they go on sale. Now, if I can just manage to actually get one of the GDMUs for the Dreamcast whenever they're available. <laughs>